to go, Scott. Get ready. Get ready. I'm ready. 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 That was loud enough. Did that sound loud to you? That was great. It Let came through really well. Mic check. Listen, Scott. How's it going, dude, buddy? So we're back. We're, we're, we're back. back. The night, nightcap. Uh, we're the land. You guys are back with the nightcap. Right. So we have some new viewers, I know for sure, this week. So I told them, don't be taken back if you're going to see a couple guys uh, having a couple cocktails talking about land investing. Uh, we love to do it. But this is a special night right a special session why uh, it's the post boot camp night camp you, you complete me look at that first i know right one second segments check that you complete me off uh yeah yeah <laughs> definitely so boot camp we were just uh in scottsdale it was a really nice and cool 65 yeah, degrees. so so mild no, uh, well was it 100 i got off the airplane wednesday night at uh huh. It was like 11.45 at night. It was still 103 degrees. Yeah, it was hot. You know what, though? We went, I called it the island of land investing. It was actually awesome. We got on this bus, it about a five-minute bus ride, and it took us to this uh, separate part on the golf course, and it was just like you were on the island of land investing. It was, it was awesome. One of our biggest boot camps yet. I think we had about 100 people there, if I'm correct. Sorry. Say that again. About 100 people. Yeah, so biggest boot camp ever, right? 100 people at this thing? And you know what? I'm going to come out right now, and I said this on the round table, and I say it right now, this is probably our best boot camp ever. The quality of people, not, and I don't want to offend anybody who's at our prior boot camps. I'm just saying, as a general rule, there was just more people just like you who came to our prior boot camps at this boot camp. It was such a good grouping of people. Lots of powerful whys. Now, why, why is the why important? What am I talking about, Scott? Help me out here. Why is the why important? Yes. We, we all we, we all need a why. We need a why in life. We need a why in this business. A lot of people they, they come to boot camp and they hear the why of others and that inspires them to move forward when maybe they're a little bit nervous to take the leap, right? Yes. To explore to to, to explore their why, uh, to to take the steps necessary to reach their why. Yes. That's what boot camp. I mean, okay. I mean, really, boot camp. There, it's so many things, right? It's seeing my buddy, right? Yeah, that's that guy. Um, it is interacting with Mark and Scott, who, I mean, they're still larger than life to me. A lot of times, they're they're geniuses, and yet yet they're yet they're down to earth and they care and they generally care about the community, and then there. Are, there are uh, there are returnees in the room that are fun to catch up with, and there are new people that are so excited, not only to be there, but that excitement lasts. It yeah. lasts Friday, it lasts Saturday, it lasts Sunday. It is exciting until the last minute, and that was awesome this weekend. It was, and then let's not forget, you know, you have the coaches there, right? You have Tate, right? Our epic coach Tate there in the in the room. Um, sometimes a bit intimidating to people because at 27, he's larger than life. It's like uh, he's just really crushing this business and he's a, a force to be reckoned with and he's an inspiration. And then we have Eric, uh, what's he now, the technician? Eric Technician Peterson, who's just, he's quiet, he's humble, but he is another force in this business that can move the needle. Then we got Mimi Schmidt, right? Uh, she's there and she, she shared a raw and uncut story of, and grill the geeks. So if you've never been to our boot camp, we have this phenomenal uh, part. I think it happens a couple times, right? And Scott, uh, you know, you were there and you you were one of the geeks getting grilled. So uh, uh, it was great to hear your story. But, you know, Mimi's was extra emotional uh, this time. And I thought it really was moving. And I, and I, and I really celebrate the fact that she did that. And um, it's just awesome, right? You have all these people. And so 
it was just a great experience, right? And then you put together people who come here and some of them have house flippers. Some of them have uh, worked in different environments and many, many, or most of them actually, right? Are extremely successful in their own right in another endeavor, right? In another realm, but they empty their cup. They come here and they learn, they drink from the fire hose, as Mark says, right? Because it's a lot of information coming at you and they learn how to land invest the way we do it. So it is awesome. And some people burn their ships at the end of this whole thing. Right. right. They swing the bat. They take action. Right? Bata, 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 right? If you, yeah, you got to swing. We always talk about, we had a show not a couple of weeks ago about massive action, right? Part of it was sure. swing the bats. Like, get up, don't be shy. You know, don't don't let the ball come by. Don't strike out, right? Don't have two strikes and let the ball whiz by and strike number three, right? This is kind of from a non-sports guy, right? And I make all these sports references, which is kind of funny. But I'm kind of getting it. Like, I was at my daughter's softball game. And I, what I do, Scott, let me get a little trick, right? Same thing in land investing, right? So I always say that, remember my favorite quote? Yours is like, uh, what is it? Notes here, short legs, long steps. Yeah, you still stole it from me. I Even people, it. I mean, you, if if you want me to say it, let me say it. If, say if it. you want to say it, that's fine. You can go ahead and say it. No, please say even it. even people with that short legs can fine. take big steps. That's how it is. Right. Or I would say the same thing in my realm. Uh, uh, even a fly can travel a thousand miles on a horse's tail. Exactly right. What do I do when I go to the games? I listen to the other parents, and they're like. That's it. Put it on the green. And I just, I just repeat what they say to my daughter. And uh, I, I, <laughs> sound, I sound professional, right? So, but it's the same thing in land investing. Tell me how it's the same. Completely. How is it the same in land? Like, what do we, how do we become a successful land investor? What's a, what's a, what's a good path to success? You jump on the horse. You, you jump on the tail of the horse. You do not reinvent the wheel. You use tools and knowledge of those that have paved the way before you. Really. You Love use it. their, you, you, you use their stories, you use their tools, you use their teachings, you use it all. And, and before you know it, you have your own, you have your, you have your own successes, you have your own stories, you have your own teachings, and then you're passing it on to somebody else. What's Scott's favorite tip of, uh, word about success? What's he say? It's kind of along those lines, leaves, success leaves. Success leaves clues. Clues. That's it. Another complete beat. Awesome. Jeez, you know, on that sorry. note, I think it's my first drink of the evening. What are you drinking tonight, Scott? I'm drinking a uh, Line and Kugel's Sunset Wheat. Line and Kugel. Line and Kugel is a is a brewery here in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah. And uh, wait, I have to. My back's kind of hurting, so. You just look like you levitated. What are you doing? Hold on, just a minute. <laughs> You have a subspecial desk, don't you? Oh, it feels better. My back feels better now. Tell us what just happened. I got this awesome new elevating desk. <laughs> Look I at push you. this button. I have a back pain to show off your desk. I love it. A physical therapist needs one of these. Listen, I, tell me what you're drinking. I need to become the spokesperson for this product. Could you show us what you're drinking all up close so we can see it? Because I don't understand what you said with that accent. Line with that accent. Line Line and Kugels Sunset Week. Uh, Line and Kugels has been around since 1867 here in Wisconsin. Wow. Well, I have Whistle Pig, and I, I'm thinking that before I left the boot camp, it was up this high. And I'm not sure how it got so low. <laughs> but um, you know what you need to do. Be, you know what you need to do before you leave the house is take a magic marker and yes, then I'll think, there. Then I'll have watered down whiskey. Is what will happen. Listen. Right. Right. Are we alone tonight or we have something else going on? Oh no, we're not alone. Actually, it's it's kind of exciting. I love these I love these nights because we bring in special guests, we bring them uh, fresh fresh off their journey at boot camp and we're going to talk to some new members of the community and we're going to get their takes on what went on. Should we talk to them first? So I think let's talk to Melissa first. Okay. I'm going to bring Melissa in right now. I'm going to promote her. Melissa, you're about to be promoted to a panelist. Here we go. Let's see if it works. Boom! Yes! Hey, Look at Melissa. this. Melissa, how are you? 
Oh, wait a minute. I got to unmute you. This is easy. I got you. Hold on. I'm going to unmute you. Here we go. And you're now unmuted. Perfect. Awesome. Great. How are you tonight? Very good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. Oh, Thank awesome. you for joining us. We used to use another format, which we can't endorse. It's called Be Live. And what would have happened? We brought you up. Scott would not see you. I would see you. He wouldn't hear you. I'd hear you. So now, this is so exciting to really... Uh, uh, it, it, I love that pillow. What is that? Superhero pillow? Yeah, it's Deadpool. It's Deadpool. Nice. <laughs> the Deadpool pillow. I love it. So how are you, Melissa? Very good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. This is our favorite shirt night. I don't know. Ooh, look at that. What I are you drinking, Melissa? I, Miller Lite. Talk about a classic. That's like you just <laughs> rolled up in like, you know, like a classic car. It's like a car. That, that's awesome. Like an Impala? Yeah, like an Impala. I had an Impala wagon in high school, by the way. So. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> I've owned it. It's true, Scott. Why are you laughing? This is true. <laughs> an Impala wagon. We should probably talk real quick. It's favorite shirt night, Scott. What's your favorite shirt? Well, I'm a company. We didn't tell Melissa. It's not your favorite shirt, Melissa. Maybe it is. I shouldn't guess. It no, it is. It's a gray shirt. I like the gray shirt. It's easy. It's you don't have to worry about it when you put it in the washer. You never go wrong with the gray shirt. <laughs> All right, Melissa, so we're, we're going to get down to brass tacks here. So okay. tell us a little bit about uh, who you are, how you discovered Land Geek, and what your impressions were from your first ever boot camp. Um, I heard about Land Geek on the Fire Drill podcast with Jay and Gwen. They're two girls that are in tech, and so uh, they bring on a lot of really cool people a lot of girls that do business, a lot of people that do businesses that you wouldn't think of. And Mark came on and it was the most inspirational thing I think I've heard in a long time. Um, I, me and my husband recently paid off our house uh, in 2017. Wow, and so good for you. For the last year we've been saving up to do rental real estate. And so we were trying to pay cash for it because um, our jobs aren't super, they're safe, but they're, they're kind of like, you know, they go through ups and downs. And so we just wanted to make sure we were getting our investments set up. So we're getting ready to buy a uh, passive income in real estate. But uh, then we saw this and this kind of fit all of the bills to start investing in real estate. Um, I don't know much about houses. So that's why I was super nervous about going into landlording and I don't have the right personality for it. I couldn't be mean to people and evict them. And so uh, when I heard about this in, I think it was June, I immediately tried to get boot camp tickets and I went about it completely wrong. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> so I tried to just buy the boot camp tickets because I just wanted to go find out what was going on because the percentages that uh, Mark was putting out on it, it like brings it into like Ponzi scheme area, not saying... <laughs> But like whenever you like read about and like investing and people that say anything like above 24, 25%, that's when you start like thinking, oh, it's a Ponzi scheme. And so right. I want to go to boot camp to find out what was all going to happen because I'm better in person figuring out whether people are lying and stuff. And so I wanted to go to boot camp to learn. And now then, I'm a little offended because you and I did have a call. We did. And, and, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. No, no, no. And like, that's the thing, like, with it is that people want to tell you the truth. So when you said like, you guys aren't, I was like, perfect. That's awesome. Because like, like if you ever hear like people that do bad things, they tell you that they're going to do bad things. And they're like, oh, no, it's not going to happen. Right. And so like, you're like, no, 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 we're completely legit. And I was like, okay, cool. And so I bought the book to get the discount to get flight, not flight school, but uh, the investor's toolkit. And then I purchased tickets to go to boot camp and got the, the, all the other stuff to go. But I just wanted to go to boot camp to start out with. <laughs> and so I went the roundabout way. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds pretty direct to me. You had a clear goal in mind. You wanted to get there. So that's awesome. And, you know, uh, your story is similar to so many of ours. Like how many of us, after we hear Mark Podolsky for the first time, were hooked? That's what it was for me. So it was for you, Melissa. Michael? Yeah, you know, uh, he's definitely, you know, listen to Mark. He, you know, he's born to be a speaker, you know, and it, it's very uh, easy to kind of say, like, like Melissa so correctly uh, stated, like, 
is this real? Like, really? You're going to have these kind of returns? Like, this is just like, this can't be real, right? This is going to be made up. Uh, this is going to be fabricated. Uh, but I always say the first thing you need to do out of business is realize it's real. We're not about, you know, we don't sit here with like, hey, look at my fancy house, my fancy car. You can have this too. We're just good people. Uh, we take our business serious ourselves. Not so much, right? And, and going to boot camp truly gives you a sense of our community and the people. So I don't know. How do you feel about the people that were there, Melissa, in terms of the, you know, obviously there's us, right, as terms of the Land Geek crew. But how about the other people? What was your general feeling for the other people there? Oh, the other people I met were amazing. Um, I met a couple of people from the Portland area and then some people that were down in New Orleans and then Minnesota and then a couple other places like Midwest and then uh, Tennessee. And they were all so intelligent. They are all pro not professionals necessarily, but they, they had like actual businesses or jobs they went to that they made a significant amount of money, but they still wanted to figure out a way to um, get passive income and figure out how to better their lives. And I think that's a lot of what this is about is how to better your lives. Not that the money's going to make your life better, but how to better your lives wholly. Like Mark wanted like the different things like of how to like look at your land investing and so you're like you're a whole person. Cause if you're not set up when you get all this money, it's going to cause you to have problems. And that's what I liked a lot about it. Right it was a whole it wasn't just you know here's a whole bunch of money yay um it's like you're gonna have a whole bunch of money but you're also gonna have the problems you had before and so you want to do it so it's best for your family and it turns out to be a blessing and all the people that i've met there were so amazing they're all like upstanding people they're fun to talk to a lot of people had their spouses um so it was just a great experience that's awesome yeah any any motivational stories that you heard from from anyone either either uh, maybe it was uh, you know success with land investing or maybe it was just their why like why they're doing this or maybe it was a, a story in the past anything that rings a bell Mike maybe I put you on the spot I know that's mean Are you asking me or asking Melissa you, either one of you Melissa what, would you like to go first. <laughs> Um, I met a lot of people that it was their first one, so they're still kind of in the fact-finding part of it. Yes. So like, sure. uh, the information that we were getting, there was so much information, it was so quick. Um, but, like, the stories were, like, all of our stories were quite similar. And, like, the why was the family part. It seemed like everybody wanted to do it for their family, whether they wanted to make their family more secure or make it so that they didn't have such a job that took them away from their family or they wanted to do it together as a family. And those were the stories that I ran into a lot. Like um, there was a, a, a mom and her son and then a couple husband wife teams and then a couple of solo ladies that their husbands were um, there but they weren't there there because um, they had their own businesses and stuff. And so just that type of thing just was super exciting that you could have whatever it was but most people were doing it for their family and that was the why is they wanted to secure, secure their family's legacy. Right. That's awesome. And I, you know what, Mike, I think more than I've ever seen, we, we had more father, son, uh, husband, wives, father, daughter, mother, son, mother, daughter teams in there. It was so cool to see these generational teams. It was awesome. You know, one of the things I think that stood out too is during the grill of the geeks, we had Mark up there, not Mark, but also Mark, one of our, uh, clients, one of the a great individual that works with us. And, you know, his training was as an accountant. And Mark, I don't know if you remember Melissa, Mark was giving him a hard time because he was talking about parts of the business that he was having a little trouble with and it was accounting. But it made me really think, because when people come into our business model, I'm always fond of saying that, because we bring a lot of successful people, people into our model, right? It's like, put whatever you're doing, right? And put it aside empty your cup and let Scott Todd show you how to do the process, right? Learn this the way we do it. But there does come a point when all of your past successes, all of your past experiences come back in and make you even better. So you don't want to leave that cup, you know, that cup is, <coughs> excuse me, empty initially, but then what happens is when you learn how to do the investing and you get it down, you're solid with it, all the life experience pours back in. So Mark, he just needed to take his accountant life take his land investing life and go like this, 
And now he's so powerful. And I think that was a big realization for him. And I just thought that was really powerful to talk about that because you, you empty the cup, but there, there's always the opportunity later on, and you should embrace all your past successes, your past experiences, and let those make it even better. Awesome. Very good. Well, thank you, Scott. Very good. Any comments on Facebook? No, the people are people are a little quiet tonight. Quiet. Uh, Barbara Tip- quiet for boot camp. They're all recovering. <laughs> Yeah, they must be recovering. So uh, Barbara Thibodeau is there as always. We got to have her on again, Mike. That was a that was an unfortunate situation that we had with well, Barbara. Yeah, well, had right. We had her on the old storms. format. Storms. There were storms. And yeah, well, listen, we had her on the old format, and she couldn't. Yeah, you know, it was horrible. We got, let's let's make that right we're now. Coming she, for you. We're coming yeah. for you, Barbara. And next, then we got the De- let's Debbie. Barbara Debbie next week. Let's just do Barbara next week. We got to bring her back. All right, let's do Barbara next week. Barbara, Barbara if you're, you're available next week. Is the week. All right. Debbie Lou's watching. She was there with her daughter, Michelle, this last weekend. Debbie, how are you? Nice to have you watching. Had a, had a couple of great conversations with Debbie. And uh, so that, that's a lot of fun too. Uh, but so anyway, I think, uh, I think it's time for a segment. Yeah, let's do a segment. What do you got? So have you seen our segments, Melissa? Are you, are you aware of our segments? No, no. Oh. Scott's good at this. Watch, very technical savvy, right? Tech, tech savvy, yeah. Let's do, yeah. Tech savvy, yeah. Well, I think I think we should first, since Melissa's never sat in on a segment before, we should do the most entertaining one. <laughs> and that would be, we call this the Boston Lega segment. Ooh. Little yeah, segment. right? Little so, segment. This, this is my favorite one to date, my favorite word. I, uh, how do you say that word? How do you say that, Mike? The cheetah. It's a cheetah, yeah. Except the word I gave him to spell, Melissa, was C H E A T E R, and oh, he pronounced it cheetah. Yeah, it's a cheetah. So, guys, they're a cheetah. Yeah, okay. so I, I bring this back every show because I, I love that word. So anyway, to let everybody know, this is this is the in this segment we learn a new Bostonian word, Melissa. Uh, either a word that is commonly mispronounced by Bostonians. You learn how to pronounce the word correctly is what you learn. Car. Right, right, yeah. Something like that. So I have a new word for you tonight, Mike. You uh, do. I, I do spell the word. I spell the word and you, yeah, say, yeah. you say it. Okay. So here we go. D R A W E R. Draw. Draw. It's a draw. Put your clothes draw. in a draw. Or you could draw. Quick draw. Melissa, can you can you say the word D R A W E R for me, please? Drawer? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Oh, that's like beer, beer, beer. You can drink a beer. You can see a beer. You can, you know, you can bear your soul. Beer or beer, Mike? Exactly. And so you draw something, or, uh, or you open your draw. Gary Fraser Lee threw it. Gary Fraser Lee threw, uh, threw one in here. Say this for me. It's a place. B A R H A R B O R. B A R. Yeah. H A R B O R. Bahaba? Bahaba? Bahaba. Oh, Bahaba. Bahaba. Bah- What's wrong? Bahaba. Yeah, ba- Maine. Of course I'm done I- with you till next week. Done with you till next week. Melissa, we really thank you for coming on our show. It was awesome to have your firsthand experience. And uh, it's awesome to see the Deadpool eyes staring at me. <laughs> That's a geeky thing. We love that. We love geeky. That's awesome. And we're going to have you back on as you go through your land investing journey. And you have some successes that will be uh, will bring you up. And we'd love to hear that. So hopefully you'll come back. Yes. <laughs> awesome. And we love the fact Thank you drink so Light. That's so classical. That's so like old school. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. We're going to push you back down. You'll be able to hear, though. We'll bring you back up for the final toast. So don't go anywhere. Sure. Okay. All right. So we'll talk to you in a minute. All right. What do we have next, Scott? Do we have anybody else in the queue? Yeah, we got somebody in the queue. Uh, also, do you need a refill or are you good? Let's do it. <clears throat> refill segment? Do you have a toast for the refill? Wait a minute. Where's Matt Forbes? Did you invite him? You're the... You're the uh, Matt, you're I know you're out there. It was... Matt, this is for you. Matt, I think and I messed you... up on the invitations tonight. Matt and Forbes, the refill us, Matt genius. Forbes. Technical advisor. What else is he? Light light show guy. And by the way, leave a comment if you notice that my lighting is better. I mean, leave, huh? Yeah, leave a comment. That's 
I said that on purpose. That uh, that's all Matt Forbes right there is the lighting. So anyway, here's a refill segment. This is when you take your uh, glass or bottle opener, provide yourself with a new drink, and uh, toast to all of this week's activities. It's almost behind us. The weekend is here. That was a here's great the thing. Here's the friendship. Hey, Thursday, we were, were we together last Thursday in Scottsdale? Yeah. Was that crazy? Just like that. Just like that. I love this time of year. You know why? Because October is right there. Here, bring oh, on Orlando. Now, if you want to go to boot camp, what should they do right now, Scott? They want to go to the next boot camp, which is going to be a small room, so it's going to sell out extremely quickly. What should they do? Well, you need to go to thelandgeek.com slash boot camp and see how you're eligible to, uh, to attend. Uh, you do need to have the investor toolkit or be a flight school participant. But, um, you know, we, we had an amazing boot camp. 100 people in the room this last time. So this, this thing is... Uh, this thing is moving right along and it's not stopping. And uh, it's you know, such a, a powerful business people, model. Great people. Um, yeah. A lot of, lot of really great energy in the room. So, of... and, and boot camp is only getting better. We're making changes for the next boot camp, by the way. So, a song. did Mark just have a song on about changes? Uh, changes. Ch -ch 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 changes. Yeah. You sing. That's awesome. We should have a singing segment. All right. Who's our we next guest? Who's coming up? Who am I bringing All up? All right, so we're, we're going to bring up Mark and Andrea. They uh, are an investing couple, and they just began their journey as well with the Investor Toolkit and with Flight School. So we'd like to hear their takeaways from Mark the Mark and weekend. Andrea promoted to panelists. Here we go. We need music for that, Mike. I know. We should have an intro for our guests. I'm sorry. Yes, we should. Uh, hey, guys. Unmute them. Hold on. i got to unmute them. We always... How's it Sorry, going? we're going to get intro music. That's what we're going to have from now on. We just realized that on the fly. We change on the fly. But uh, how are you guys doing? Good. Enjoying the cheetah segment and everything else, all of your yeah, jokes. The draw, the cheetah, the bear. What? Pardon me. On my, on my left side here, my dog just wants to be patted. He keeps just giving me. You know the dogs, when they want to get patted, they keep nudging you. and Their arm up on you? Yeah, yeah he's like, <laughs> just looking at me like, hey, what's going on? Why are you We're talking to me? Dog on. <laughs> your dog on. Oh, he's right here. Nico, come here. So we can all there say hi. Go. Oh, okay. oh, there he is. Oh. Now the other one's going to get jealous, but that's okay. <laughs> that's good boy. So how so are Mark, you two doing? Good. Excited to get this whole thing rolling. We yeah, got our first yeah. mailing out on Wednesday. So Last night. yesterday. So yeah. Awesome. First and mailings and now was that with, was that with Scott Todd's uh, assistance? It was. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what do you mean by that, Mark? Oh, he's getting bad yeah. Hold you accountable and make sure you're not going to get off the call until you get your mailing done. So. That is amazing. So Mark and Andrew just started flight school and Scott Todd helps you execute in real time and get your mailings out with LG pass. Yes. Yeah. How long were you guys on that call? We were only on about 20 minutes. Oh, uh, nice. Cause we had everything ready to go, but. She's an well, ace. Nice. Uh, Good for you guys. That's why I'm teamed up with her and not doing the solo. She, uh, <laughs> He's an action taker. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a wild ride with her in charge. So, yeah. for 20 minutes on that call, uh, you know, it went pretty, pretty smooth. Sent out 200. Is that what you said? No, 20. Oh, 20. Yeah. yeah. 20 a day, right? 20 a day. Yeah. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. Yeah. I think we're going to do 100 a week, but yeah, same thing. 20 a day but now you got the gist of it now you know now you know how to use the software isn't it amazing it is so amazing yeah it's so simple now did you are you choosing to lick and stick them yourself or are you using the mailing company we use a lot yeah, yeah the mailing company yeah yeah we talked to scott we had a question like you know is there any better response rate if you do the licking and sticking <laughs> and right. nope he didn't think so so yeah so yeah. less work on our end and it's 80 cents a letter or something like that. I mean, I couldn't pay somebody to address letters for that cheap. So plus the stamp. So no, no. And you know, I always say our business is a mathematical equation. Right. It's really a matter of numbers. Hence my favorite joke. Remember Scott? Three kinds of mathematicians. Those who can add those. Right. Who can add. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, Scott. Look at He hates that joke. He hates <laughs> that that joke. That is awesome. I'm you joke. say favorite jokes all the time, though. There's so many. I can't. I 
can't remember which, you know. I do that in training for the fight at the top bottom when Lady Rita was like, what's the third kind? I'm like, that's, <laughs> <no."> <laughs> that's a great uh, one, one last question before we uh, ask you your takeaways from the weekend. Uh, has Sada mailed? I don't believe so because we Sada. have everybody in the group has prompted him at least twice today in the Facebook page. <laughs> Um, really nice, of course. And he's of course. <laughs> so hopefully Sada gets his mailing. Guys. I think I'm going to go right now and, and give him an inspirational post myself while we're is talking. Is he on the call? Do you know if he's on let's, the call? Let's send him a video after this, Mike. Let's bomb bomb him. Yes. It's all about positive motivation. That's yeah. right. It really, and you know what? I was uh, The beauty about going through flight school is you're not alone. You get to do this with other people. Uh, you network with them, you hold each other accountable. You can, you can playfully help kind of push the needle forward and mm -hmm. people love it. You know, it's awesome, Scott. I just realized our view is just doubled. You know why? I think the flight school just got out for the evening. And I think, ah, yes. Which means another thing. I know who's listening right now. Scott Todd. Todd, Todd is out there. <laughs> is he online? Because uh, if he is. I, you know, he's very good. What do we got? He hides somehow. Scott Todd, can we bring out the brain as he's new, newly dubbed the brain? Can, I wonder if we could draw a comment out of him because, uh, you know, <laughs> I know he's watching. He secretly loves this show. He so, does love the night game. had him on a few times. Well, actually, we had him on when we had the old format, and it was like we had to have a translator in Matt Forbes because Matt could hear him, I could see him, Scott couldn't see or hear him, and it was like this. So we have to actually bring <laughs> Scott Todd back up, but... Uh, I always call him my big brother in the land investing bit, but even though I found out this past weekend I'm three or four months older than he is, and I'm like, and he, but I still doesn't change it. He's my big brother. He's my primary motivator. He's uh, not only does he motivate people in flight school, even the people that hang around him. He's just awesome. He really brings another level of intensity. So uh, hopefully he's out there. I wonder if all of that got him to comment. Come on, Scott Todd, let's throw a comment up on the board. <laughs> all right. Boss man, he'll be, he'll be here. Him. He'll show up. What are you going to ask them, boss man? Let's get some questions here. All right. So, Mark and Andrew, just give us a little background on how you found the Land Geek and what your main takeaways were from this weekend, your first boot camp ever. So, I found him through, I believe it was Joe McCall's podcast. I listen to Joe McCall regularly, and he interviewed him. I have done some fix and flips and have experienced firsthand the risk that comes with that and um, decided to embark on the land investing side of things. And concurrently to that, Mark had been, how did you hear about the land geek? I think you forced me to listen to some podcasts. And you know, what's interesting about land investing is it's the first uh, real estate strategy that we're both equally interested in. You know, like Andrew just said, right. fix and flip and I, I wasn't really interested in, in doing that. And, but uh, we, yeah, we both started listening to podcasts and like you said, Joe McCall and maybe some others. Um, and uh, that's how we found both land investing and then specifically Mark. We looked at you know, some of the other options out there and just uh, decided to go with, with this program. I think, that, and I think it's been a great choice. Yeah, I think with land investing, it's, it's a lot of like a numbers game. You, know, you put in a bunch of offers you get some accepted, you blast advertise your property, you talk to a bunch of buyers, you know, it's just, it's a machine. And yeah. that really appealed to both of us. So, yeah. you know, Mark says there's only two things you can control in the business. You've heard him say that, right? And you, you must know because they were all over the tables. Marketing um, and mailing. Yeah, mailing and marketing, M&Ms. Those are the only two things we really those are the gas pedals we throttle up. Now, the rest of it we have to deal with. So if you really throttle those up really high, you need to have systems automation, delegation. You can have an intake. You know, so that's the, that's, I always call that the niche within our niche is the fact that we ultimately won't be doing this, right? We hire it and implement a team and automation and delegation. So, yeah, you, you can throttle this up with those two uh, gas pedals, mailing and marketing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Good. Yeah, good stuff. So. We love M&Ms because uh, we love M&Ms. I was going around. Can, can, can I? Can I? Can I share my uh, my epiphany this weekend? An epiphany. Well, That's a little great. bit. I mean, really, if you think of it, uh, it's M and M and M's. Oh, you did tell me this. Let's talk about for, that. For so many of us, so 
I think, you know, mailing and marketing are huge and they will move your business. It's all a numbers game, but there's another M that I think is very, very powerful. And Mark and Andrew, you guys probably would agree with this. And this is in anything you do. And that's mentorship. Mm -hmm. If you have a mentor to look up to, to give you guidance, uh, and we have so many mentors in this group, I think the M and M and M's really makes things. It's called the third M. It's, it's like a deep principle hidden yeah. deep within the archives. It's the third M. The third M. <laughs> right. Totally agree. All right, anyway. Well, isn't three so, M like tape? So glue holds it all yeah. together? Um, exactly. Part. 3M, is, it's an adhesives company, a uh, medical <laughs> supply company. Uh, Mark and Andrea, tell us about boot camp. Tell us your top takeaways, maybe one or two from each of you uh, from the weekend. Yeah, so I think the thing that resonated the most with me was the whole concept of the abundance mindset, which really has nothing to do with land. Um, but just thinking about this whole business in terms of there are there's more land than everybody in the room could ever buy. Um, there are more deals than there are land investors to buy those deals. There are more buyers of that land than we could ever fathom. It's just there, there's so much there that more there that we could ever imagine. And it kind of under that same umbrella, there's more money than than you could ever need. I mean, there's trillions of dollars in the world, you just have to find it. So you should never be limited in this business by the amount of money that you have or don't have. Um, and Scott went into that with the selling the note. So it's you're basically you're in the deal and then you're out of the deal when you sell the note. So I think that was probably my biggest takeaway was coming about this from an abundance mindset. So that's that's awesome. We talk about that so much in this business. Mm -hmm. uh, so many of this the the mindset of scarcity and uh, we don't need to be that way. It's it's so abundant. It's so fruitful. Right. Um, and then and we actually have, go ahead. Well, we actually help each other. So if there are a lot of investors working together in a county, it actually benefits everybody because then the sellers realize the true value of their property. So, so can I please interrupt? Because there is a Facebook quote of the week that I would really like to talk about right now, Mike, that, that goes exactly that. with this. Huh? Okay. Uh, so it must relate right. to what you said. It relates exactly to what you said. So right. it's another segment of ours. It's called the Facebook quote of the week. So tech savvy. I know, right? So let me find the uh, let me find the quote. I mean, you don't have from... it yet? No, I got it right here. Don't yell at me. Where is it? <laughs> you are yelling at me. So, Mike, this is actually from Jacqueline. Uh, she just she and her husband Marty just signed up for flight school, and they're already taking massive action because yes, they're in flight school, but they've already sent out mailers, and they're doing really well. But 10 hours ago, she posted, hey, all my husband and I are 10 days into this business, sending letters, just signed up for flight school. Last night, we talked with a couple who owns a parcel in the county we are mailing to, not on the hot list. And they've recently received five to six letters identical to the Land Geek model offering to buy their land. This would seem to strongly contradict the idea that very few people are doing this business and that there are plenty of deals to go around. Or is it just a fluke? Overnight, I've gone from feeling optimistic to feeling panicky. Somebody talk me down, please. It's exactly what we were just talking about. Yes. Right? Andrea, what did you say? Say, say exactly what you just said, if you don't mind. The competition, or not the competition, but people working in the same county. It actually support, we support each other because then the sellers see the true value of their property. When they get six or seven offer letters that are all 250 bucks and they think their property's worth $1,500, it kind of anchors their expectations. It does, it anchors their expectations and uh, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of competition. No, in fact, we remail uh, areas every three to four months and the reason being that People aren't always ready to sell, right? They, they, something happens. All of a sudden, the car breaks down. The, the child goes to college. Uh, whatever it may be, something happens. They're just finally done with that. They get the next tax bill. So, and we still bring out three to five percent acceptance, one to two percent close. It just happens. It's just a consistency. It's just you have to, just like the marketing, uh, consistently marketing moves that parade along so everybody sees the land. 
consistent mailing, puts it in front of people. It's a numbers game. You just keep that wave going. You know, every time you mail out, you're going to have deals. You just keep the process. And the people, yeah, they may get a few letters, but, you know, when the timing's right, they'll sell. But the other people you'll get accepted letters from that, uh, that will accept your letters, it's their time. So it's just a matter of timing. And, you know, that's why you're always going to hit people with the right timing. You're always going to do that. Um, some people, it won't be the right timing, but the next mailing, it will be the right timing. So it's just a consistency. Uh, you know, there should be no uh, panic buttons hit, no no, uh, no worries about, um, you know, saturation. It's not going to happen. Do you it's mail not going to happen, Jacqueline. You go ahead. Do you mail every 90 days for a year, every 90 days for two years? Yeah, I'll mail to that list is exhausted. What I'll take off is the people that have bad addresses. I'll take off the people that... Well, no, I won't take off the people that yell at me. I leave them on. I will take the people off that I buy from. And uh, I actually, when I was doing my intake, loved those people that would be like freaking out on me because I call them back up and get them all calm. And sometimes they'd sell, but you know, it's just like, hey, you know, this is me, the guy that you left the nasty message to. I just want to talk to you about why I say that. Letter. Oh, okay, you know, <laughs> you calm down. But uh, yeah, no, I, I do it until the list is exhausted. Mm -hmm. take some time. We, we, we mail to areas where there's an overabundance of land. We're looking for large areas, large acreage. It's a numbers game, and there's plenty out there. I mean, there's places that you wouldn't even think, right? Uh, places that even in Florida, like, well, like Florida, yeah, Florida's got tons of vacant land that you could buy really cheap. It's tons of subdivisions sitting around that just nobody's, uh, you know, people are looking at just holding on to land. You let it comes along, you buy it cheap. So don't ever be scared that, uh, oh, uh, Somebody else probably already mailed that area. No, no, no. Just mail and make the deals. And then let your own results judge whether or not this is a, a business you should be worried about scarcity. Let your own results decide that. Exactly right. Good, good, good point there, Michael. All right. Michael, I've never been called Michael by you on the show. That, that's not true. I call you Michael all the time. Not to my face, then. I call you Michael all the time. You just don't know this. I don't know. I'm Mark. Right Mark, now. what are your takeaways? What were your takeaways from boot camp? Well, it's funny. We've been talking about scarcity, and that's been on my mind. But a little bit of a twist on the, on scarcity, which it, I think this was mentioned in boot camp. Um, if not, I've heard it recently, and it's been on my mind because it's kind of part of my why, which is besides land and Bitcoin, the only truly scarce resource is human time. And, you know, with enough time, you can accomplish anything, but you only have a certain amount of time on this earth. And yeah. business, I think, affords a leverage of your time in a very powerful way. And you can see that from the people who've done that already, you know, from the, the cool stories we saw at boot camp from you folks, yourselves, you know, of course, Mark and Scott, Todd and, and um, you know, all the, the other people. Maybe. Mimi. Um, mm -hmm. So that's been very powerful for me. So that was kind of a, a strong takeaway. Um, the other thing that was a big takeaway was just uh, how authentic, that's the word that comes to mind is how authentic, you know, like Mike, I think you were one of the first people we met at the bus stop and I didn't know who you were, but you were just a friendly, authentic guy, still are. Um, and, <laughs> and, you know, the whole crew and yeah, and the, the, the attendees too, uh, you know, just, really authentic people. And Scott, you know, obviously we had a phone call with you when we were getting introduced to fly school. And I think that set me at ease from the start is that, okay, these are authentic people. You know, they're not, you know, super uh, hypey or strong arm sales or anything like that. And um, so, yeah, I just, I felt, I felt really good about, about that. So those are kind of my, my two takeaways. Very cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and I would also add to what Mark was saying. Uh, the community was yeah. incredible. Um, I've gone to a lot of real estate seminars, and there's a lot of um, desperation uh, in those seminars. And what, what I found with this community, where there are some strategic thinkers, some people are thinking long term, they're not, they know they're not going to quit their job tomorrow. And they're going to put in the work. They're going to put in whatever it takes to get that long-term goal that happens to be two, three, four years down the road. And it was really inspiring to me to see both you and some of the other people that are two or three years ahead of us embarking on that journey and thinking long-term and not just thinking tomorrow, I'm going to quit my job tomorrow. Right. So 
maybe a level of sophistication that was kind of elevated everybody. So. Oh, that's, that's a, that's a great summary uh, of the weekend from both of you. I mean, um, you know, the, <clears throat> we're there to learn how to uh, invest our money, but we're there to learn how to invest our time. You know, it's our own, not, it's our, it's our only non-renewable resource. And uh, some of us are on the back end, like this guy over here. Um, and uh, he didn't even catch that. I'm trying to be funny. Not even paying attention to me. The back end, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> your time, you're on the back end. You're saying I'm getting older? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. We're all getting older. I think that's yeah, right. Yeah, right, right. All right oh, sorry, Thanks, Mark. Mark. No, yeah. no worries. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. You know, I like, to, you know, I'd like to, I think that what's beautiful about this whole boot camp is that people come together. They're not sure about what who we are, what we are. And then they come and they, uh, you know, they take that risk and then they meet other people and you watch. I love how the whole, well, we've gone to so many, I couldn't even count them, the boot camps. And by the end of the weekend, everything's gelled together. It's just a good group of people that have kind of aligned and they realize, hey, this person on my left, this person on my right, this person in front, this behind. They're, they're like me. They have <laughs> very real goals. They're realistic um, and uh, they're good people. And we're in this together and we can help each other. This isn't something you should bottle up and hold inside. Just by sharing it, it actually gets better. So I, I just, you know, it's awesome. Um, I, I just want to thank you for coming to the boot camp. And it's just awesome to have people like you there that take that risk. Because nobody knows. I told Mark, like, people come, they don't know. They assume we're nice. But they don't really know until they get there. Like, are these people really nice? Uh, and when they find out, not only are we nice, but everybody that we attract, we have like-minded people that come to us. And that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. That was a great event. So thank you. Thanks to you both for making it a great event. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you for coming and uh, thank you for sharing your story with us tonight. Uh, we look forward to having you on again in the future. You can right. let us know how flight school went and uh, uh, hopefully the mini bat doesn't come out too many times on you. But <laughs> just once so far. I'm gonna but bring. Uh, I'm gonna bring Melissa up so we can have the final toast with Melissa. And, uh, I told her I bring her up, so I'm gonna bring her up. Dude, there's a couple of questions, Mike. Do you want to address them quick? Oh, yeah, we'll address them with Melissa here. Okay, so... Hi, Melissa. Oh, I got to unmute her. Michael... We uh, questions. We're going to answer them. A couple of questions from the Facebook group. So, Michael A... a oh, Michael, you got to tell me how you pronounce your last name. It's I'm French. Do you speak French? A-I-L-L-O-N. Um, so, he, he, said, he asked me, uh, Scott, what percentage of your sales are terms sales? So I would say at this point in time, three years into it, I'm probably doing uh, 80, 20, 80% terms, 20% cash. Um, Mike's a heavy cash guy. I know my first year I was a lot of cash, you know, it was probably, it's probably the other way around my first year. I was probably more 75 cash, 25 terms. And about month 15, I flipped that and really went crazy on the terms deals between month 15 and month 30. Well, Mark 30. talked about that too, right? Remember, you, people were bringing up questions about, hey, um, I, I don't have much capital right now. And he's like, well, we're going to encourage you to do more cash deals initially, and then we'll have a shift in the process. The great thing about this business is it allows you to kind of change it in any direction it needs, you need to. Um, typical, we talk, typically, we talk about Scott Todd would probably say 70, 30 uh, as a typical. Just because you know why? There's more people that will pay terms than cash. There's more people that can make payments, and that's why we make uh, – those options available, but um, it can suit both. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, I wanted to answer uh, Michael's question. Uh, what's with the Cubs? Mark Podolsky said, Mark's, Mark's watching. Mark's watching. Anyway. Mark's in the house. He said, right. uh, go, go Redbirds. Boo. Mark. I don't watch a uh, Redbird. I don't watch sports. Fill me in. What's the a Redbird? Co- it's the Cardinals. The Cardinals. <laughs> the Cardinals? The Cardinals. Is that football or baseball? That is, uh, that is baseball. <laughs> so we're, Cubs is baseball. It's funny. We were in the airport, Laura and I, and coming to Arizona, and some guy goes up and he starts chewing the ear off of this guy walking with headphones on, and he starts saying about how I won the Super Bowl. And this guy, how he won this. And I'm like, Laura, I think this guy, I don't know anything about sports. And I'm like, this guy must be famous. Should we get a picture with him? I'm like, looking at him, I'm like, I don't know. What is he like? Must be football. And I'm pretty sure it was because he had this ring. I don't know. But I don't know. Uh, 
get a picture with him. Even though I don't know who you are, I want to get a picture with you. Come on. <laughs> anyway, Mark says the Cubs are pond scum. Mark, Whoa, that's, that's, that, that that's is hurtful. Low. That is hurtful and low. Mark, wait a minute. Does Mark know its favorite? We did our favorite shirt. Favorite so. shirt night, Mark. I have a shirt Mark. from in, in, in Harvard Square in Boston. Anybody ever been to Harvard Square in Boston? You know they have a Tibetan shop. And this is my favorite shirt I got there. My daughter hates the color of it. I love it. Um, it's just my favorite shirt. It's so comfortable. Oh, oh look who's that. What do you got there? Who's this? Oh, it's my dog. <laughs> What's his name? It's my dog. It's, it's my there. dog. <laughs> Very cool. Wow. Awesome. Well, hey, we, we appreciate you guys joining us. Um, Mike, I think you have the toast tonight. I have the toast. All right. Well, again, what I want to say is, uh, you know, around really, again, celebrate. People take risks when they come and do things that are not in the ordinary uh, realm of like activity, right? Not many people are going to jump on a plane, fly to Arizona, get driven out to the island of land investing in 110 heat and spend three days in this crucible and, and then just kind of like take that risk and come out and hopefully on the other side be better because of it, right? And I think that's what happens. You go there and, and you, you, you experience something and it changes something in you, right? It gives you this seed of hope. And then you go back to your own life and you implement that, you plant that seed and your life changes. So I just want to say uh, cheers to taking chances and meeting new friends and, and, and taking on uh, new possibilities. That's, a, that's my toast. Is that good? Love it. And planting the seed. I love that. Cheers. 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 All right. Time for the outro. You guys ready? Good show, Mike. It's time for the outro, which by coincidence is the same as the intro. <laughs> the outro. <laughs> Here comes the intro. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, Andrea. So much, Melissa. Mark, I know you left, but thank you. And we will see everybody next week. We'll have more guests. Oh, Barbara Thibodeau, right? That's what you said, Scott. We're going to bring her on. Barbara Thibodeau next week, yes. as long as she... Uh, and then the week after that, we're getting Scott Todd on here because we had a... So this is awesome. I'm playing the music. Yeah. Outro. Outro. Thank you. Okay.